Hello everyone, in this video I will go over my solution for the problem name make it permutation taken from today's code forces round. This problem is an excellent problem which will teach you how to minimize the cost of turning an array into a permutation. So we are given an integer array A of length n. We want to convert it into a permutation of any length by performing two types of operations. We can either remove an integer from the array or we can insert an arbitrary integer into the array. And the cost of the first operation is A and the cost of the second operation is B. And we want to find the minimum cost of turning the entire permutation. And the only way which we can form a permutation is by having all numbers from 1 to n in the array. So let's consider a few examples. Let's say that we have n is 3, a is 3, b is 3, which means that the cost of removing an element and the cost of adding an element are both 3. And let's say that the array is initially a permutation. So obviously in this case, the answer is 0 because we don't need to remove any elements. In the next example where n is 5, a is 1, b is 6, and the uh, b is 5, sorry, and the elements of the permutation are 1, 2, 3, 5, 6. There are a number of possibilities. So the logical way to go about this is to consider each possibility. Uh, the first possibility is where you just have an, a permutation of size 1. So over here, let's write down the size of the permutation, permutation size. So let's call this variable i. And over here, let's on the right side, let's map it to the cost. So let's make this table. Initially, the permutation size is 1. The cost is, is, is the cost of deleting all the other elements. So as they mentioned in the problem statement, removing elements costs a. So that's why the cost of deleting all these four elements will be 4 times a, which is 4. Then let's say you want to find a permutation of size 2. So we want only elements 1 and 2. So the cost of that will be deleting all these three elements, which has a cost of 3. Then let's say we have a permutation of size 3. So the first three elements, uh, which means that we need to delete elements, the last two elements. So the cost is 2. Let's say we want a permutation of size 4. So this is an interesting case and this is going to be a typical case where you have to both delete some elements and insert some elements. So these elements are, they remain as it is. These elements have to be deleted and you need to insert an element 4 in between. So the cost of that is going to be the cost of deleting two elements plus the cost of inserting an element. So it's going to be the cost of deleting an element is 1 each and the cost of inserting an element is, is basically 5. So the total cost is 7 because you delete two elements and insert an element. Uh, then, then the cost for, for forming a permutation of size 5 is going to be uh, using a similar logic. You just have to uh, now delete the element 6. You have to only delete the element 6 but you still have to insert the element 4. So the cost is going to be 1 for deleting the element 6 and uh, sorry it's going to be 5 for deleting for inserting element 4 and 1 for deleting element 6 so the total cost is going to be 6 and when you have a permutation of size 6 the cost is going to be 5 so considering all the possibilities you find the minimum cost to be 2 which is for which is for forming a permutation of size 3 uh, note that we manually went through each possible permutation size from 1 to 1 to 6 and you could use a similar logic for any general value of n you can iterate over all possible permutation sizes and find the costs and the solution is basically all about doing this efficiently so you can verify that 2 is the correct output for the second example and you should try out the other examples by hand and make this sort of table of which maps the size of the permutation to the cost of making that permutation. Now the key problem which arises when you do this is that the elements can be up to 10 power of 9. So you potentially need to consider all possible permutations up till 10 power of 9. Uh, the elements 
ai can be up to 10 power of 9 that's why if you had for example if you had the, the numbers 1 3 7 and 100 you would need to consider all permutation sizes 1 2 3 4 all the way up till 100 and if if you have one more element 10 power of 9 for example then you would need to iterate all the way up till 10 to the power of 9 so obviously that's going to time out because you can't have a loop of 10 power of 9 uh, and that's why you need to find a more efficient way in which you compute these these costs for the permutation sizes so over here our first key observation comes in which is that you don't need to consider the costs for all possible permutation sizes you only need to consider the costs for the permutation sizes in which the values change so the key observation is that the length of the permutation or the permutation size denoted by i should be one of the elements of the array a this observation relies on the fact that if you consider some other permutation size let's say if you have the array 1 2 3 5 6 if you consider permutation size 4 which is not an element of the array a then it's actually more optimal to either reduce the size and go one step back to 3 or to go one step forward to 5 and it's actually not going to be optimal to be somewhere in between two consecutive values of the array a you can pause the video and try to understand this observation but basically what we are saying is that the length of the permutation or the permutation sizes should only be one of the elements of a if they are in between two elements of a then a more optimal value in, in which there is going to be a smaller cost can be achieved by either reducing the length of the permutation and by going to the previous element in a or by going to the next element in a because then you will have to either delete fewer elements or insert fewer elements while maintaining the same previous cost so if you go to a previous element so if, if you go from 4 to 3 then you actually don't have to insert 4 at all you don't have to insert 4 at all and since you don't have to insert the number 4 your your cost actually reduces by b because b is the cost for for reduce for inserting the element a so by going backwards your cost reduces by b and by going forwards your cost reduces as well by by a so uh, that's why either ways you, you you will be better off and that's why we only iterate over all possible elements of a so we just the length of the permutation i this this length should should belong to a so that's why we iterate over all elements of a so iterate over each element of a and try to make this permutation and try to make a permutation of size so let's say that the current element of a is x so let's call this element x and try to make a permutation of length x so in order to make a permutation of length x we we basically x is the same as i in case you're wondering i just use a different variable because normally we call each element in a ai and ai is equal to x so let's say we have taken an element of a x and we are trying to make a permutation of length x then notice that we need to iterate over the elements in increasing order so we we obviously need to sort the array first and then we go through each element now let's say we are at some element let's say we are going from element 4 to element 7 and there are elements before 4 and there are elements after 7 so let's say we are going from 4 to 7 then the change in the cost so initially we know the cost for forming a permutation of length 4 is some value and to that we need to find the change in cost as we go from 4 to 7 so the change is going to be basically just you, you you reduce so you no longer have to delete element 7 so we no longer delete this element this element 7 so the cost of deleting an element is a 
as mentioned in the problem statement that's why you no longer have to delete a but you have to you have to add all the numbers from from 7 to 4 so we have to add all the numbers from x x minus p let's say p represents the previous element and x represents the current element so we have to add all elements from p to x so that's going to be given by x minus p minus 1 because we have already added 4 so our current permutation is 1 2 3 4 and we know that 7 already exists because 7 is an element of the array so 7 exists as well but we need to add 5 and 6 as well so to add 5 and 6 we just do x minus p minus 1 so 7 minus 4 minus 1 is 2 so you can verify that with this example x minus p minus 1 is the number of elements you need to add so you multiply that by by b because you have to the cost of adding an element is b so you add these many elements add these elements and you delete one element i mean you no longer delete one element so this is going to be the change in the cost initially so initially the cost will be so initial cost is going to be the cost of deleting all elements which is just given by um, n times b and the cost of inserting the the element one so delete delete all n elements so that's that's actually n times a and you add the element one so n times a plus add the number one so this is going to be the initial cost and then you keep iterating through each element of the array and you keep adding the element the current element minus the previous element minus one times b minus a so you you do cost plus equals to delta cost at each at each location in the loop and you update answers minimum of answer comma cost and once you do this for each element the, the you have the final answer stored and the variable answer so initially answer is the first cost value and then answer is the minimum of answer and the next cost value and now i'll show you the code which implements the same idea but uh, you should understand the basic approach remains the same we are just iterating through all elements of the array because we know that the permutation size can only be one of the elements and you can figure out these minor implementation details on your own uh, i'm using this implementation method but if there's a simpler way you can do it that way as well but the basic general idea of iterating through each possible length of the permutation and making this sort of table uh, that idea remains the same so in the code for each test case i take in n a and b in long longs because the values can be up to 10 power of 9 and i store all the elements in a vector and this is actually not needed so you don't need to maintain a map you can just sort all the elements of the array but i i just use a map in the implementation but it's not really needed in the initial cost is going to be a times n so the cost for deleting all elements of the array and the initial answer so this is the initial answer is given by cost of deleting all elements plus cost of adding the element one now the the number p represents the previously considered permutation so this is just going to be the previous element in the array a and for for each element in the array a so for each element in the sorted array a notice that i didn't actually sort but i used a map so the the map automatically sorts the elements of a that's why i didn't sort them because as i i i treat through each element in the map i get to know the it dot first gives the element so it dot first is the element of the array and it dot second is the frequency and using the elements i i get to know which elements need to be deleted and which elements need to be added so we know that we need to delete we no longer so no longer delete element 
i but we need to add all elements from p plus 1 to i minus 1 so the cost of that is going to be i minus p minus 1 times b because i minus p minus 1 is the number of elements from p plus 1 to i minus 1 and obviously we update p with i because i now becomes the previous element for the next element uh, in, in the array a and if you do this for each of the elements in the array a you get the cost at each point and you update the answer with the new value of cost and in the end you just print the answer so you can verify that this code does get accepted you could have done it simpler by just sorting the array and by considering the previous element and the current element uh, instead of using two different variables but i did it this way and this also works and the key idea remains the same that we need to basically just consider all possible permutation sizes and find the cost for each permutation size and we can do that efficiently by only considering the elements of the array a so i hope you like this problem and my solution if you have any doubts in the solution do leave them in the comments down below and if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Thank you.